Yeah, we're gonna do some more egregious super cops like that. I did a good one yesterday. Actually, I did two good stories. They were pretty good hits. I actually had some friends thanking me for the good clips I put up there, especially that guy, eight cops, eight cops yesterday for a guy recording on a public sidewalk in Chicago. Well, this one today, we got four right here. So we got four cops for a guy that was sleeping at a bus stop. Yeah. Standing armies are getting some liberty. Welcome to I Know What You Did Last Shift, where we show everyone why police are the standing army our founding fathers warned us against. Today's video takes us to A Young City's YouTube channel. Make sure to check I out his channel and subscribe to his channel. His channel right link here. and video link will be in the pinned comment. Make sure... You know, that's why I enjoyed like these channels like, you know, like Audit the Audit, Art Archive, Lack Luster, James Freeman, Here's the Deal, Brian... A lot of these channels out there. There's like five or at least six or seven I'm sub to that, that show great stuff. There's another one. Yeah, there's First Amendment rights. That's another one. There's like five or a bunch more. Let him know I sent you. In a video posted on March 20th, 2023, a young Bobby city Green noticed Bird, four St. Mary's County right Sheriff deputies interacting with a man sitting on a bench at a bus stop. The original call was for a man dozed off and sleeping. The interaction went down like this. Do you have an ID on you? You ain't got to give them to them if you don't want to, bro. I'm not in the fan. I'm not in the fan. Hey, look at that. Look how many offers it took for that one man that ended up sleeping on the bus stop. One, two, three, four officers for a guy that was doing nothing. He was committing no crimes, not breaking no law, out going by his own business, just resting at a bus, at a bus stop, at a bus shelter. And so what? The guy fell asleep. Freedom, freedom of speech. You ain't got to give him your info, bro. Do you have your ID on you at all? Trust me. That's fine. Can I have it? Are you being... He, he can't remember your name, bro. You're not being you're suspected you're to commit no crime, bro. You know, and here's the problem, too. Some people self come, you know, like, officers demand their ID. People just give it up that easily. No, you don't ever have to give up your ID. And unless the cops have reasonable, articulate suspicion that, you, that you're committing crime... Are about to commit a crime or already committed a crime. Other than that, they have no reasonable or articulate suspicion to man, demand your ID or let a name when you have committed no crime, no infraction. Dude, I just can't remember the last name. You ain't been suspected to commit a crime, bro. You ain't got to give me an FO. And here's another reason why I always sit there say, don't give ever give your ID. Because you know why? Why cops always want their ID? They always say, "Oh no, we want to, we want to, we want to see who we're dealing with." No, they want to run your name and hope and pray, and holy God that you have a warrant because to them that's touching job security. We're just checking up on you. That's all we're here to do. Interfering with an investigation. Right. Freedom of speech. Yes, I'm saying here recording. You have the right to be here. You have the right to report. You have the right to interfere with the investigation. I'm not interfering. What's your last name, Marco? Freedom of speech. A sheriff deputy can't help but pull the same good old do not interfere, interfere this, interfere that, whenever a member of the public is recording, exercising their First Amendment right. In the case law of Houston versus Hill, it states that the Supreme Court found a city ordinance prohibiting verbal abuse of police officers to be unconstitutionally overbroad and a criminalization of protected speech. A young city wasn't even being verbally abusive. He was just informing the man who most likely doesn't know he has constitutional rights to not answer questions by police. Of course, the police don't want people to know their rights. The deputy sheriff tried to act like he recognizes the First Amendment, but pulls the interfere line. The right to freedom of speech allows individuals to express themselves without government interference or regulation. The Supreme Court requires the government to provide substantial justification for interference with the right of freedom of speech when it attempts to regulate the content of the speech. Man, I can't remember your last name. Did you take anything today, Marco? You also heard that the cop says, you have, to say, you have the right to record. You can film us so you just don't interfere. He wasn't interfering with the investigation. He was telling that man, don't, bro, don't give up your rights. Always exercise your rights. You know, in this day and age, cops, always they hope that you don't, you know, you, you fold and give up your rights, and you got cops that get butt hurt. They don't like when you exercise your rights because, you know, in the old days,
back in the 70s, 80s, cops knew that, you, you know, they knew how you rise and they abide by life. But, you know, to this day and age, I mean, you got these cops that are still wet behind the ear, balls barely even drop, and all this other. They, they, they don't care about your rights. All they care is about protecting their ego, their wallets, and going home to the family. They don't care. You know, then you got cops who want to pull guns out there, and then they, what's their go-to line? We were fair for our safety and our lives. And another thing is, you have a right to record the cops when you're on official duty like that. I know Louisiana, they have that back to blue, blue lights moment where it sucks. There's a couple cities in Oklahoma, well, we can thank, you know, PayPal, Fatty Cakes, and Peeping Timmy Harper for that. I know Arizona, you know, there was a UD was talking about that a long time ago about, oh, it's illegal. No, you just can't be close to eight feet from the police when they're on the duty to be cop watching. My rule of thumb is just be at least 15 feet away from the cops. Is that it? Okay, I'm just making sure. Again, review the check one. So, I'm wondering, just want to make sure you did take anything else. Okay, hey man. Okay, but you, you've got to, you've got to talk to you, man. Yeah, we're just trying to get your last name. None of, none of them know. Remember your last name, so. Which we're just trying to check on you. Make sure you're okay, man. You got a couple calls. Unbelievable! Saying. You see that? Look at that. Four, four thin blue line thugs, just to harass a guy. Guy just chilling on a bus stop, minding his own business, doing absolutely nothing wrong. He ain't committing no crime. You see a sign that says no loitering on a bus stop? No. Hell no. I see people that are just sleeping, chilling on a bus stop. I say, like, okay, that's fine. Because there are people that are transient and homeless, and bus shelters are a good way, you know, to kick your feet off, to relax. So you can, because sometimes when you're on your feet, your feet have to hurt when you're walking, standing your feet all the time. And bus shelters are good, you know, to to get off the rain or the elements like the wind as well too. Hey, you were dozing off and that, that was it, man. Yep. Are you just trying to make sure you're good? That's it. No. Nah. Any ambulance or anything? Hey, man, I'm just asking hey. questions. You hey, you're going to the bus? Well, my name number two. What was it? I know, man. You know, some people are going to be saying, it's like, well, the reason why cops showed up is because this guy needs a welfare check. A welfare check? Since when does a guy just doze in? I fell asleep at a bus stop and need a welfare check. Guy's doing fine. He probably just chilling and maybe maybe he's walking around. Or you, maybe, sometimes you know, when you sit down, you fall asleep. It happens. <laughs> I think I heard you. No, we're not going to do that. Are you waiting for the bus? Okay, where are you, where are you trying to go? Because you were asleep. Apparently you've been here for like a long time. If you were asleep, you probably wouldn't know how long you've been here. It's not a crime to be sleeping on the bus stop. I mean, I mean, shoot, I seen, I, there are times I'd be on the bus or walking around a park or like that, and I seen people who are, who are dozing off or laying down on a bench or they fall asleep or like they maybe got a little, maybe like a, their coat over there to keep them warm like that, you know, there's no nothing wrong with that. You know, some like I said, there are homeless people out there. Sometimes they find a bench and they want to lay down and get and get a little shut eye. Do you live down here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you? Do I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember one time I was so tired I was I was out all night and I was at a transit center like five o'clock in the morning. I fell asleep at. I fell asleep at the transit center and some stupid security guy woke me up. I'm like, whoa, well, I'm freaking sleeping, dude. My bus don't come for another hour. As long as you don't need anything to help or anything like that. Because again, they were concerned you were sleeping. They tried to wake you up several times. And they said you wouldn't wake up. So. Did you just see the bus now? We just got here. Yeah. Just got here. Uh, so could we just get your last name so that we can... What he means to say was, can Next we get your name and see if you got one? Bingo! <laughs> yep, right there. That's exactly why. <laughs> 100% facts. I'm terrible. Because you know why they want they want to run you with a warrant and hope you got a warrant. Because you know why to the police? That's money. That's commission. Ching, ching, ching. That's job security. 100% facts. Is that what I'm hearing? 
All right. Don't fall back asleep because somebody's going to call back and we're going to be out here to bug you again, okay? To check on you. Okay? That's good. Do I have some paper? Like rolling paper? No. No, Marshall, I don't. All right. Hey, what's your name and badge number? Deputy Chaudi, ID number 398. 398. Still, uh, I'm talking to him. Okay, I'm just making sure. EFC winner. Yep. No, I'm talking to him. What's his, he, I, ain't, I ain't get his name. You got three. You yeah, got three. You. He has an ID Deputy number. Deputy ID number 398. Uh, you got three. <laughs> cops get on. Yeah, when yep, I they did. Story, when you ask me, do I know what's going on? Yeah, these cops know. got on. Walk of shame. I don't know nothing. Walk of shame. Okay. Yeah, but you have to get rid of him. Yeah, very well. Get on the body. Hashtag right. fuck the blue. Hashtag fuck the police. Hashtag keep film the police. Damn question. Hashtag for the people. N O T S E E, baby. Not interfering. You want to know, Sheriff? N O T S E E. Bam. Hashtag F T P. For the people. Yay. Bro, you're not being suspected to commit no crime, bro. That's why I told you. You ain't, you ain't had to say nothing to him. Yeah, drive a machine. Nothing. Going back with the tails tucked and back to headquarters with no rest and no tickets, sir. Hey, get out of here. Go I cry yourselves in on the donut, ladies. Time for final <laughs> now, I don't know why the dispatchers thought it was a good idea to send police to respond for a man sleeping dozed off. They should have sent an ambulance instead of police. If the dispatchers had half a brain, they would know sending police to any call increases chances of escalating situations. There's no situation cop... And what's the old saying is, you know, yeah, okay, if the guy's sleeping on a bus, I mean, you send an ambulance, maybe you may see if he's okay, if, like he needs some food, some water, you know, resources. When you're sending a cop to the situation, you are sending a gun to the situation, the scene, ladies and gentlemen. Can't make worse. Police across America should really brush up and learn laws before they try to enforce it. Since when do cops need That's someone's ID to, to determine if they're so sick? How can a cop when in reality, despite months. the cops blaming about, oh, we need your ID, so in case we get. And you know, a couple of these cops are probably like what, barely in twenties. They're still wet behind the ears. Balls haven't dropped that much. More they calls don't know about, about you. The well, no, it's you. Nah, really. What they They're wanted to do was get the man's ID to see if he had any warrants. Yeah, exactly. Remember, police are not your friends and not there to help you. Let me know what you think about the entire situation. If you have a video of your own, you want covered. Video submit form. You know, and plus, you know. Like I said, yeah, cops just want to run your name, see if you got a warrant. They're not here. They're here for themselves, their pocketbook and agenda. What is the motive of the cops that uh, are quoted at the end of the day? That is, they don't hear to serve to protect you. They are here to serve to protect their pocketbook. Their quote, their go-to line is, oh, we're just, we just want to get to our home, uh, fa home to our families after our shift. Oh, we got another good one right here, ready to go. And this next one, you know, the, the, you got we're gonna have an ego statistic, fragile ego cop right there. Think he's a think he's Mr. Big Shot and then a hothead. This is where this this video comes into play where cop washers do help out people. On the floor. Since the First Amendment protects the right to record matters of public interest, the man was well within his right to do what he was doing. However, for some reason, one of the officers didn't like that the man was exercising his rights and decided to threaten him. Yes. Um, there should not be a police report. There most certainly will be a police report. Keep in mind, this guy said nothing to the officer. He was just simply walking by, holding a camera. He wasn't harassing this woman. He wasn't harassing these officers. He was doing nothing. He didn't say anything to the officer. Or come up to them or anything like that. The guy was probably 10 to 15 foot away. Just filming. Doing a simple cop watch. A good sign of cop watch. Let's get it. Sir, yeah. I need you to walk away. I'm currently interviewing a victim of a crime. If you don't walk away, I'll file charges to the state for obstruction. Do you understand me? Jorge, Barry Arza Silvario, you're being recorded on audio and video recorded on body cam. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I need you to walk away. I'm giving you a lawful order to walk away from my scene. Sure. I'm interviewing a victim of a crime. I will forward charges to the state for obstruction of justice. Do you understand me? I'm going to tell you for the last time, and then I will complete a state attorney office review, and I will forward charges to the state. You're impeding my investigation. You hear my victim crying sitting there, and you are doing this to her. Wow. Do you hear that jack-off bootlegger cop? He's accusing this cop watcher 
This cop watching, this guy was filming doing nothing wrong. And this jack off placing the blame and saying, you are the reason why she's crying. Wow. What a fucking jack off. Maybe it's the fact that this cop is the reason why that this fucking poor lady is crying. Hmm. They are part of this investigation. Are you not? Are you part of this investigation? You're gonna find. You're, you're gonna see what. You're gonna see why. So they can stay. You have no part of this investigation. You need to leave. As seen in the footage, the man continued to record the officer while staying silent and refusing to respond. The officer threatened the man by stating that he would forward criminal charges against the man for obstruction of justice if he didn't walk away from the scene. Then. The officer walked back to the female subject after saying that he would be certainly filing charges against the man. Following this, even though the officer sees contact with the man, he continued to talk. He continued to talk about him with the female subject, stating that he had no decency for human beings, and that he exploits people for a living. Charges will be filed to the state, sir. Have a nice night. And this is all documented. Audio and video recorded on body cam. Officer Lynn, Sarasota Police Department, ID 1870. Ma'am, I want to remove you from the situation because this gentleman has no decency. I love you without my husband. Okay, well, unfortunately, that can't happen, and I want to remove you from the situation because this man has no decency. Don't worry, it's going to get better. This so, lady's going to realize this this man had, had nothing to do with him making a cry or something like that. Okay, well, I can't let you remove him. Okay, I know you're not going to do it, but... This man exploits people for a living. That's what he does. Oh my god. Thank you. This jack off is the prime example. Prime example. This is exactly, exactly how finding freedom bench warmer, like, you know, goes around. He says that when every, anybody that's filming the cops on official duty, that you are, he says, if you film the cops, you are stalking, harassing them. Not only that, finding bench warrant acts like when you like when you film in the film the cops, so you are committing a crime. That's illegal. That's a crime. Or he goes around like public photography is a crime. Huh. Stop. So stop talking. Hey, we're gonna go ahead and put him in the vehicle and get him out of here so we can get her out of here since Jorge Barriarge is so so barrio has no decency for humans. This childish behavior continued with all the other subjects involved in the investigation. Watch as the officer continue to try and dispel the man by talking against him. You know what? You know, that's the same fucking rhetoric bullshit that finding Benjamin says about me. So I film, they say I, I stalk and harass my neighbors. That I'm peeing investigation. I, I, that I'm committing obstruction. Or, or like a disorderly conduct in public like that. He says that shit about me all the time. All the time. What I'm doing a cop watch, him on a bus ride, or anything in public. I'm starting to wonder if this guy's fucking related to finding freedom bench one. This is where the officer was humiliated, as the female subject ultimately thanked the man for recording the entire ordeal and told the officer that she was comfortable with it. This goes to show that even though the female subject appeared to have an emotional episode, she was able to see right through the officer's malicious intentions. There it is, right there. That's the money shot. That's the money shot. Bam. That tells you, cop watchers are effective. Because cops, you know, they don't care about your interests, you know, like that. They use malicious mischief tactics like that. You know, they when you're a victim, they're trying to more treat you like a suspect. This guy recorded like that because you know she knew that this fucking dirtbag hot dead cop. Just like when I did my cop watch and I, when a, a lady got pulled over driving while black, cops accused her of not using turks, saying no, not yielding. 
and I record a whole interaction like that. Cop knew I'd film like that, and the, and the lady actually thanked me because you know why? I saved herself or oh, I saved her a two hundred dollar ticket. He was gonna write her up a two hundred dollar ticket, but the cop gave her a warning, all because I was out there cop watching one night. Mm hmm. Cop watching is effective. <laughs> The officer eventually had a walk of shame back to his patrol vehicle, and certainly didn't dare to report the man for any wrongdoing. Here we have two officers who attempted to harass the wrong man. Wow. Yeah, she thanked the, she thanked that guy. I, I don't know what this last one is, but there is one more I want to get to after we get out here. It's a little bonus one. Alright, we got a little right here. This is one that comes out of... Uh, out of Vegas, actually, yeah, the metro area like that. And you, cops do have this reputation when they're looking for like a high profile suspect and they can't, can't find him, where you just mind your own business. Sometimes cops will just look for the, the first random victim or person like that and, and treat them like a, like a hostile suspect. Check this out. Let's kick things off with an unbelievable encounter between a bunch of detectives and an innocent man who was sitting in his vehicle and watching YouTube. Note that he was not committing any crimes at all. He was rightfully parked in a parking spot on his property and was simply yeah, using his apartment phone. complex. Suddenly, a fleet of detectives pulled up on him with guns drawn and forced him to step outside. The man subsequently started to record the ordeal on his phone. So I'm sitting in my car watching YouTube, and this is what just happened. Literally, at my property. They look at him. Look at this. What do y'all want, man? Why are y'all pulling me over? Sitting there like, bro, just talk. Nobody's in the car. Y'all coming to me, asking me questions, pulling guns on me. What do you want, man? Come up to me like that. What is wrong with you, man? Man, look, what do you want? Bro, I don't have my gun on me. Touch okay. I don't really want you to touch me. I need Matter of fact, no, you can't touch me. I don't have any guns. Look, Look. no guns. You see that? Can you raise your hands up for me? My hands is up. Okay. I just showed you. I don't. Well, I mean, listen, do you have any? Like, no, I'm not. Okay, you just put you. you come yes. on, no. What? Tell me. See, this is what happens like that when the cops can't find a suspect or or they get vague description. What do they do? They start harassing the first person they see on the street, or they just pull out the first car, to, they like that. You know, sometimes you got cops out there like, well, well, if I can't find, if I can't find a John Doe, I'll just, I'll take you in, cause we gotta make it rest. We gotta make it righteous. That's how bad police in America is. So let's go off the first guy to see. You parked here. Clearly, there's a lot of unmarked cars. We're looking for somebody. We don't know what car they're driving. You pulled up and you stay there. That's a good reason to come over here and do that. Yeah. There ain't no crime. He just chilling there. So what? He just pulled up in his driveway. Maybe, I mean, sometimes people pull in a driveway in a complex or just chilling there. Maybe because there's a good song on the radio. Maybe they're talking the phone or texting or watching a video or do, 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 do something. Sometimes people sit in their car eating their meals. As seen in the footage, one of the detectives claimed that the reason for detaining the men was simply because they were looking for an unknown and unidentified vehicle. Yeah, so, they can't find a person, don't go after you. They assumed that his car was the one that they were looking for. Then, as if this encounter was not already unlawful enough, the detective quite literally admitted to harassing the man for no reason. As yeah. the detectives had a clue. The cops didn't do this shit. Just harass you just for the fuck of it. Was. Essentially, because he, he ain't got, been, he ain't got shit bad to do. The random driver in it, just to check if they were lucky enough to find their suspect. So he's telling me that I'm sitting in my car and they're looking for somebody and there's a lot of unmarked cars and he just pulled a gun on me and told me to get out of my car because they're looking for somebody. Do I fit the description? We don't know. Oh, right. So you're just looking at people. So you want to go um, pull somebody else over and pull your guns on them and everybody go get out the car? It's, it's, this is the dumbest thing in the world, man. Explain everything, okay? We don't know what car they're driving. You pulled up and you parked there for a good 10 minutes, right? He's ain't no crime. At Del Taco. All right, I'm cool. I'm okay. done. I'm done with this. Listen, listen. But I will be making a court. Right. Fuck it. Yeah. He comes bitch him on. Well, you said go up ten minutes. Ain't no crime. Ain't no crime. About. Go about your business, please. What do you think he's fucking loading up a gun or something like that? Smoking some drugs or meth like that? No, he's watching. He was watching you chilling his phone. It's like you know something. You're chilling listening to good sound on the radio. Fuck. 
Soon enough, the driver was fed up with the detective's excuses and dismissed him by stepping back inside its vehicle and ending the confrontation immediately. This encounter goes to show how easily law enforcement can harass and detain you without a single reason. Exactly.